Gender dysphoria, it's the feeling that your emotional identity is opposite that of your biological sex, and it can truly be an emotional time. And it was a time experienced by a staff member here at Longwood University. This is her story. I just, I had this deep secret. You know, and I could not continue. It was either a surgery or suicide, basically. Those were the thoughts of Dr. Jess Simmons, who was born a boy named Joseph. Even at the young age of 10, Dr. Jess knew that she was gender dysphoric. Her biology pointed to that of a male, but she always felt in her spirit that she was female. And I was 10, and I remember tracing my hand and my arm, and I put bracelets all over my arms and rings all over my fingers. I didn't understand the boys at school, uh, and so I didn't play with them. I wanted to play with the girls, but you know, in third, fourth grade, I had boy cooties, and they weren't gonna play anything with me at all, you know, so I just was solitary. Solitary, a word that Dr. Jess uses often to describe her experience with living with gender dysphoria. But it was one day in a neighborhood bookstore that she found a book that would reshape her path forever. Very vividly, I was, uh, this was in high school, and I was in a used bookstore. And I was always androgynous looking. I was wearing a blue turtleneck, and then my hair was sort of um, well below my, my ears, you know. And I went to this used bookstore, and I was in the psychology section, and I found this book called Canary, the story of a transsexual. And it's like, oh my God, you know, this is me. And as I was looking at the book, the, the door opened and the bell rang, you know, ding, ding. And this woman came in and she went up to the front counter talking to the owner and she says, you know, uh, where's the psychology section? Uh, and the owner says, hey, what's over there? And I was the only one in the store. And the woman who came in said, oh, next to that young woman in the blue turtleneck. Canary, the story of a transsexual, is the story of a young male who underwent surgery. Dr. Jess considers this book to be the framework for what would become her reality. As a young male adult, Dr. Jess says that the gender dysphoria continued, but she was unsure how to deal with the thoughts that ran through her head daily. I had this desire, this drive to be female because I was female inside. It's been consistent throughout my life and persistent throughout my life. Still unsure how to deal with her secret, she went on to get married to a woman and together they had a baby girl. Eventually got uh, married um, and my wife and I thought that being around the feminine 24 seven would help alleviate things and it did for a while, but it's always, there's always this urge there. Uh, one of the ironies is that um, we eventually were in couples counseling and the counselor said to her, well, what was it that attracted you to Joseph in the first place? And she said, well, he was unlike any man I ever knew. Some might call it irony, but Dr. Jess would call it a sign. And finally, that day came when Dr. Jess made the decision to become the person she felt she had always been. After surgery in Montreal, I remember walking the grounds of the hospital and suddenly it's like, oh my gosh, the trees, the birds, yeah. the sky. I, for the first time, I really felt spiritual and connected. I remember vividly waking up after surgery and I had this grin on my face that I couldn't get rid of. It was like, it was amazing. I was so thrilled. But things weren't always sunshine and roses for Dr. Jess. While she underwent physical changes, it was the change in other aspects of her life that hurt the most. Uh, transphobia took away my career, you know. Uh, it cost me my career, it cost me my family, because, um, but there was a huge price uh, to pay. As a male, Dr. Jess had been a well-respected and tenured English professor at a university in Northwestern Ohio. But when that university caught sight of Dr. Jess's secret, everything changed. They just says, no, you can't stay here. So you know, some hyperbole, Right, I went from getting chalk dust on my tweed jacket as a male tenured associate professor of English right, to getting butter on my blouse working in concessions at a single screen movie theater. Um, but there was a huge price uh, to pay. It, you know, I had 15 years of minimum wage jobs with no insurance. You know, there were times when I unplugged my refrigerator because it cost too much. I lost my car. Uh, you know, it was, it was very difficult. Um, had a lot of isolation again. 
While typically it's our family that we lean on in times of struggle, Dr. Jess admits that she didn't have this luxury. Uh, I did have family members that were not accepting um, at all for various religious reasons and other reasons. Again, this is in the Deep South. They're, they would say, if you, if you go through this surgery, you know, you'll never be invited to your daughter's wedding. Her husband will never accept you. But that was certainly not the case for Dr. Jess. She values the relationship that she's had with her daughter. My daughter has always been fabulous. Yeah, she's always been accepting. In fact, it was a trip with her daughter that would not only be the turning point in Dr. Jess's career, but more importantly, her life. Uh, my daughter uh, came to me uh, in Ohio and she says, Dad, um, I've got a job teaching at a at Farmville University. And I said, what, where, what? I was the last to know. And she says, yeah. She said, you know, would you come down and help me find an apartment? So I said, sure. You know, we make arrangements to drive down. And I tell her, I said, I'm just gonna bring my resume. Cause again, I was a slew of single, of, of minimum wage jobs, you know, and my resume, of course, you know, if you look at the resume, it's got associate professor of English. Then it's got, you know, concession here at, at a small theater and it's got working at Ben Franklin and all these, you know, so that my resume is just shot. I wouldn't have even hired me too many red flags, you know, what's, why is this associate professor doing this? So I brought my resume down and came to Farmville and uh, Laura uh, went to the English department, English and Modern Language, she teaches Spanish here and she's filling out paperwork and she was getting her books and all this sort of stuff and I just stepped aside to the secretary and said, hey, can I leave my resume? And she said, oh, hon, we're not, we're not hiring. And I said, you know, well, can I leave it anyway? She said, oh, yeah, sure. So I left the resume. While dealing with the horror of losing a career, losing family, and losing friends, Dr. Jess says that she never lost hope. And it was in the fall of 2013 when she got that call from Longwood University and found the place that she now calls home. Joan of Arc, if you read the, the histories, she was tried and burned at the stake, not for her religious beliefs, but because she refused to wear women's clothes. I went into Ruffner and um, there she was. And I was the only one in the building with her and I went out and just held her hand. And I said, look, let's see if we can make this happen. You know, and that was just an amazing moment. Almost, to me, it was almost like, yeah, Joan of Arc, me, it's meant to be. I'm at work, you know, um, having a miserable time and uh, my the phone rings and it's a, it's a Virginia extension. So I pick up the phone and it's the English department. And she said, that senior resume, we want to do an interview. And we did an interview. And the chair, Rhonda Brock Survey, says, what am I gonna do? I need somebody to teach American literature, tech writing, and freshman composition. And the secretary, Lisa, said, oh, Laura's mom dropped this off, and she picks it up and shows up my resume, and I've been teaching for like 25 years. She says, oh, look at American literature, tech writing. And so they gave me a call, and, um, you know, they offered me the, the job, and it was wonderful. The funny thing is that because I had lost my career before, you know, and that was such a difficult, difficult time, I mean, in shock, it was a very emotionally painful, painful time. I didn't want that to happen again. I didn't want to come to Longwood University and have someone find out of my trans background and dismiss me. So I called him back and um, I said, you know, I would like to accept the job, but I need to tell you something. So I told him my story. And Rhonda said, okay, can you still teach English? <laughs> and I said, yeah. She says, okay, good. After teaching at Longwood for two years, Dr. Jess decided that it was finally time to share her story. And in front of students, faculty, and staff, she opened up for the first time publicly about her journey as a transsexual. It was wonderful. I was, you know, the day after, I was really nervous coming to school. I didn't know what would, what would happen and it was, it was just fantastic. Dr. Jess has served Longwood's campus in many capacities, but she prides herself on being able to impactfully live out her purpose. I think my purpose here is letting the LGBT community on campus know that uh, it does get better, and they see me as someone who has overcome career and life-destroying transphobia. There's an old saying, it goes, sometimes a happy ending is you, on your own, picking up your own pieces and starting over, freeing yourself up for something better in your future. In the midst of hard times, Dr. Jess indeed picked up her own pieces. 
and she's now found the place that she calls her home. I am so grateful to Longwood University and to the town of Farmville for openly embracing me and welcoming me that I am, I just want to do anything I can to help Longwood University, to help the students here. In Farmville. So far life is great. I'm really happy here and I hope to be here for many years. I'm Autumn Childress.